On January 2007, WITSO arranged an international conference with the branch leaders' participants. The main part of the conference was dedicated to the activities of WITSO during the month of the Second Lebanon War, which started on the 12th of July 2006. Dear participants of the WITSO meeting of representatives, the many guests from Israel and the world, the panel members of this afternoon. When we are talking about the, the last war, we need to remember and remind the world we were attacked. Not only the soldiers that were ki killed and those who were kidnapped, but civilians in Shlomi and Maalot were attacked on the 12th of July 2006. We left Lebanon in May 2000 not to return. We gave everything according to international treaties. It is we that were attacked. One can question the outcome of the war. One may say that the fact that the two soldiers, Ehud Goldwasser and Eldad Regev, are still in the hands of the Hezbollah is a great shame, and it is. However, the war had many impacts, and we will touch on these in just a few minutes. During this war, I was in the north, mostly in Kiryat Shmona, the town that has received one-fourth of the rockets, 10,012 rockets. Our office was directly hit by a Katusha rocket, luckily with minor damage, and then an additional five attacks that almost burnt it. During these thir 33 days, we were rendering direct help to local citizens, treating distressed people in Mada, supporting and coordinating help to other psychosocial services in the region as part of our own and the Israel Trauma Coalition mission. What has been damaged is not just houses and workplaces. The system was relying on volunteers. And to that extent, all of the municipal workers were also volunteers because a state of emergency was never declared. The level of volunteerism was enormous. Amongst them, the Witzow headquarters and the Witzow villages and staff. Volunteers asked to host people, total strangers, and for many, many days, to give food and shelter, to send them toys and electrical appliances, to visit them in their own shelters. However, all the good wishes, and there were many, can't replace the sense of security that my country will come to help me. And you will hear some of these great stories soon. Another significant effect is the non-organized evacuation. Fact-wise, the government evacuated over 24,000 people, whereas Gaida Mak evacuated only 5,000 and Vitsa around 2,500. But who cares about the fact? It was an organized evacuation. It was a reactive rather than planned. The, re the general unfortunate atmosphere is that we failed. In my own view, the most important thing is not if we failed, but what did we learn from these 33 days of war. I want you to meet with me some of these heroes that made the terrible times of the war somewhat bearable and even joyful to so many. I wish to finish off my opening words with a personal statement. Ani ma'amin ve'afal kishit ma'amea Ani ma'amin Thank you. Our first speaker from the panel is Mr. Mamdou Harun from Rikhania. He will speak in Hebrew. Rikhania uh, is the Cherkessian village on the border of conflict. It was founded in 1880 by the Ottoman Empire. There are 1,175 residents these days. During the first days of war, we tried to organize ourselves. I gather all the people, including the social uh, worker, we could not fathom that the war will, would be lasting that long. Sitting on my balcony, I could see that. It's just three kilometers away. My first phone call uh, suggesting some help was from Witzow, from Kobe, asking me, do you need some help? 
I was thinking I will get a phone call from the government or from local authority. I wasn't expecting it to be from WITSO. I said to Kobe, hold on, I will call you when we need. I don't want uh, our citizens to be evacuated, to run away. I saw that the war was uh, getting longer and that people are distressed and so we decided to evacuate the women and children. So in 24 hours, we had two buses, we loaded everyone that wanted to go, women and children mostly, and we came to Nalal, and I can't have words to describe you, the welcoming we had there. All the Cherkessian communities around the world, both in Jordan, Syria, in uh, Europe, and of course in Russia, uh, were concerned about our conditions and called us to see whether we are taken care by the government. We reassured them that we do get the best uh, uh, services that we can. I personally was in uh, the Russian television live and I uh, was kind of an ambassador to say to the world that we are okay, we are in good hands, we are taken care very well by the uh, Israeli authorities. But I also mentioned to them that we have a bigger family called Witso and that we are part of this family and we are very happy about it. Ziva is the director of a daycare center in Sderot. She also has a family that she also think about. My Ziva, and I'm a member of Sderot, the city that is known to everyone as the city of Kassam. I'm Ziva, I'm from Sderot, the town that is known as the Kassam city. I'm a mother of three. I lived in Sderot for the last 20 years, but my journey to Sderot started in the north, so I know what it is. And our life in Sderot is basically for the last uh, six, five or six years, mm -hmm. is daily a uh, threat of Kassam and sometimes actual Kassam rockets falling. On a daily basis, I have to cater for the staff, which is not such a small staff, and the kids. Between Kassams and, and other emergencies, we need to reassure them, we in Vizzo uh, Daycare Center, that they are also usual kids. We have to give them the opportunity to do normal things. As part of the routine, which might sound uh, crazy, we also have uh, added to our daily uh, um, curriculum, support for parents, support for kids and parents to deal with the stress. Up till recently, about a week or two weeks ago, we didn't use the, the, the uh, yard and it's funny as it may sound, it's very difficult to uh, go out again uh, and to bring that as part of the routine of the, kin of the daycare center. We have 20 seconds from the alert that the Kassam rocket is flying till we arrange the, kin the, the, the daycare center. 20 seconds is no time, basically. Exciting on the one hand and sad on the other hand is to see these young kids, very young toddlers, uh, hearing the siren both inside the kindergarten and outside, which doesn't give you much uh, chance not to hear it, uh, running inside, uh, standing next to the inner walls, kneeling and covering their heads. It's amazing to see how they got used to it with these so many days and months and years that they are already uh, brought up into this condition. And they are like um, taken into as, as part of their behavior. Despite everything, we open the daycare centers every day as, it's a norm, as if it's a normal day, even though there were alarms and maybe bombardments. We got um, um, information from the home front uh, about that day and we decided to run the day from the shelter. Despite the situation, I'm not sure the kids notice the difference. We did everything to make it uh, normal for them. They do feel what's going on, but unlike us, they're less aware of it. I get my strength from the children, mostly. The other thing that helps us is the organization around us. We saw that recently took all the stuff to a weekend in a hotel in Ma'alea Hamishan near Jerusalem to help, us, to help us to recuperate, recover, get some strength. Everyone was taking care of us. 
<laughs> our supervisors with us as if we are now kids. <laughs> Uh, a woman that will represent voluntarism on this panel, and this is uh, Mrs. Janet Kaysari, who worked through the war in Nachlat Yehuda. I came to Israel in June 1967 as a volunteer and have been here ever since. I recently retired after 24 years working at the Weizmann Institute of Science, and now I have time to volunteer. One morning in July, we woke up and we were at war with our neighbors in the north. No unusual warnings, nothing very different from the daily scourges that have been carrying on as long as most of us can remember. The uncanny thing is that the war was being carried out only a 45 minute drive north of where we're sitting today. I really felt kind of guilty doing nothing, so I phoned Wietso to ask if help was needed and I was directed to the Wietso Agricultural Boarding School in Nachalat and told to report to the kitchen. I found my way to the school and found it absolutely teeming with displaced persons from the north. The kitchens were in total chaos. Once eggplants, once courgettes, tomatoes, cucumbers, you name it, whatever was needed for three meals a day. I've never seen such amounts of foods before. There were Wietso ladies cutting salad and Wietso ladies overseeing the conveyor belt dishwasher. Wietso ladies laying the table, serving food and helping small children who could not manage on their own. The Wietso ladies took it all in their stride, no matter how monotonous or dirty the job was. Of course, all these ladies were directed by the regular staff. I haven't forgotten them either. They have a very, very important part. They were so overworked and so grateful for any help that they got. Absolutely fantastic people. I don't know the number of refugees. Now I'm wiser. But I understand that the school catered for approximately five to six times the amount of the usual people. The kitchen itself was absolutely marvelous. I understand it's a Swiss donation. A really professional, well thought out kitchen and the dining room is light and airy, very cheerful. But with all that, it was not planned for such large numbers. I met some really lovely Wietso ladies there. Some of them since the war have become my close friends. Uh, it's nice to have such good company when you're doing such boring jobs. I volunteered there for three weeks till the ceasefire, and these unfortunate people were able to return to their damaged homes. They interrupted lives with many families, with many family members hurt and maimed, and the memory forever in their lives. But I want to say as well, during the war we saw pictures on the television, and I found myself thinking how lucky and fortunate these evacuees were, that they had where to go, and they had who to look after them. Not like we saw the pictures of the evacuees from Lebanon or in other cases where other wars around the world you see the poor evacuees sitting by the side of the roads with a pekel on their head and holding their babies and nowhere to go. There was no such thing here. I was so proud of Wietso and Israel in, the Israeli people in general who opened their homes and they opened their hearts. Thank you very much. As you know, usually Vitsa Nachlat Yehuda, sponsored by Vitsa Switzerland, serve 300 students. 200 of them live in the dormitories. So in those dormitories and classroom, we hosted uh, even 1,000 Israeli North people. And uh, the condition was good. No one complained uh, about something during this period, despite this large number. We couldn't uh, do this work, you heard about it, without the volunteers from Vitsa Rishon Lezion and you and your chaverot was amazing. And uh, if I didn't call until 9 o'clock at morning because I was busy, they used to call, Chazi, what do you need? Can I help? And uh, without the volunteers, helps us, of course, my wonderful staff in Vitsa Nachlat Yehuda. Without clock, without asking about money, about vocation, nothing. They start working at 6 o'clock in the morning and the last meeting was in my office in the midnight to build a schedule to the next day. 
It, it was a ni nice environment. I, I can't explain why. You live in the North for many years. What was the difference? The difference here was when we had to leave our houses this time. And uh, we felt that uh, nothing was... Then in the other wars, everything was arranged. They told us we have to go to hotels, we had to go here. Here we didn't know where we were supposed to go and we felt so homeless. We, in the beginning, I, I didn't believe it. I thought it's just a week or a few days. So I told my children, be calm. Uh, our soldiers were kidnapped and uh, the Air Force is going to go and get them home and that's that. It's just going to take a few days. But then when I saw it was so serious, and uh, when Hadassim opened their, how, their, their youth village to us, and uh, nobody was uh, arranging anything for every, anyone to go anywhere, then uh, I was very happy and my children were very grateful for that. They, they arranged everything possible for us to feel at home and comfortable, and, uh, and we, with all the news every night, we were calm and happy that we were in a, in a place that we knew it was safe. How was it to uh, know that your husband is there looking after the, uh, the farm? I didn't see him for nearly 30 days. And you're with uh, your kids. He was in the council there, so he was helping the people who were left behind and, and couldn't find places to go, or the elderly people. Who, and um, I was quite proud of him. <laughs> Thank you, Rivka. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on the first day of the war, uh, it was Wednesday, and uh, I was the director of a summer camp in Metula. And we had a trip planned already to go to the, um, around the Rishon Lezion. And uh, we were supposed to stay one night and then go back to Metula. But uh, because Metula lies on the border, literally, uh, we knew that the children would would be much much feeling uh, would be feeling much safer if we can uh, organize someplace else instead of coming back to Metula. We went on the trip, told the children that uh, we might be able to to extend our uh, staying in uh, in uh, the area of uh, Tel Aviv and Rishon. Vito and uh, our community center in Metula have a very uh, long relationship uh, for the past, uh, I don't know how many years. And um, we got a, a, our manager, director of the community center called Kobe, and they started talking about maybe somehow Vito can help. And Vito right away uh, offered to uh, um, um, to host us in uh, Hadassim. So uh, the children were very happy. They got another day of, uh, of, uh, of a camp instead of going back to the Katyushas. And we went to Hadassim. I have to say that um, the, the welcome that we, we were felt so welcome and uh, all the volunteers there were so anxious to help us and to bring us uh, whatever the kids needed and uh, some of them didn't have uh, um, something to wear for the next day and, uh, and they offered us the pool and the kids didn't have swimming pools and they just offered us anything that they just could and the children felt so welcome and so safe and um, knowing that back home there's war and uh, the houses are being bombed and their parents aren't uh, exactly safe, but they felt so safe they didn't even think about the war. Um, during the whole war we were also offered to come to Nakhlat Yehuda and uh, they kept such a warm connection with us and uh, it was just, it was amazing. Thank you. Vitzo Achuzat Yeladim is a special education institution who is uh, mentally and emotionally disturbed children ages 12 to 18 from all over the country. 
uh, they have behavioral problems, they have mental problems, emotional problems, and they carry a lot on their backs. And we were uh, one of the institutions that were working at this at this time because as a special ed education institution, we didn't go for summer vacation yet. We were still working. And the first missile, the first Katyusha landed in Haifa was on Thursday in about 8 o'clock in the evening. And the kids, we, uh, I had about uh, 60 children in the boarding school. And it was in the summer, as you know. The kids were out and uh, we heard the bomb. I, I didn't realize that first. The kids came to me and uh, it was 8 o'clock in the evening. I was still working. You know 8 o'clock in Vizzo, it's still early. Um, so I was in the village. They ran, they ran to me and said, Yossi, we, hear, we heard a missile. And I said, it can't be. Here in Haifa? It can't be. You're imagining you, you fly. Then it was just before the 8 o'clock news. And uh, they opened the, the television and it was announced about the first missile in Haifa. And uh, the, f the kids were very frightened. I put them uh, immediately in their buildings and I decided to open the shelter immediately. And by the way, without calling anybody, the, the staff came to the boarding school. I didn't have to call nobody. And we spent about eight uh, days in the shelter. We arranged kitchen and everything for the kids, for the northern kids to be with us in the shelter. And it's very strange. This is uh, an institution that is supervised by the Ministry of Welfare, by the Ministry of Education. But from that time, I didn't hear from anybody. Probably they were in the shelter also. So I, and, and the phone didn't work. I don't know. Usually they call me every day. You have to do that. Why you did that? But on this time, complete silence. Only we heard the Katyusha missiles. And uh, the only voice that I have was Vitzel management uh, that I was uh, in communication with, with Kobe, Yossi, Chaim, and uh, we, we try to uh, decide what to do with the children. And after, uh, after a week or eight days, we decided together to uh, take the children to uh, Vitzo uh, Ganvanov in Petah Tikva. And after that, we arranged them uh, to be uh, in a summer camp in uh, Vitzo Hadassim. Uh, the staff wo wo worked very, very hard. And I'm talking about my staff in Haifa. They had sometimes to leave their own children and their own families and to be with our children in the shelter. And this is, this is a problem. And they were very anxious about their own, uh, their own families. Some of their families evacuated from Haifa, so they were all alone. In the, ha in, in the shelter with the children for a long time. After that, they go to uh, Hadassim and uh, Petah Tikva. And I think we, we should applause to the staff, the staff of Vixo, because they work very, very, very hard with the children, with people that they don't know. And nobody talked about money. Nobody said we're working from eight to five only. They worked without telling anything with all their hearts, and this is something. You see. This is Nofar Peretz, who studies in Ira Emek, but she volunteered there too during the war. How many days were you volunteering in your village? Once or twice a week. Well, it was all my initiative. I wanted to volunteer, and as they didn't call me back, I decided I'm not taking that. I will come, and I will volunteer. Toward the end of the war, the bombardment gets stronger and stronger, and there was a decision to evacuate the youngsters through the Madassim, which is the 
uh, young uh, counselors program to the south, to Rishon Etzion. Though we were made uh, to uh, take part in many, many pleasant activities, we always listened to the radio and the TV because we left our families behind. Whenever we heard about a, a, an attack in a full and in the, uh, 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 what they call it, the valley uh, area, we called home quite anxious. So though they were in kind of a safe space, they themselves worried very much for their family. Vayom, do you still volunteer today? Yes, I am volunteering in MADA, which is the Magen David Adom. She volunteers as a young counselor. She volunteers also, she wants to volunteer in the hospital and in the uh, uh, civilian guard. So you see, um, she has loads and loads of, of, of volunteers. Nofar is only 15. She is from the, she, uh, during the war, she was from the ninth grade. Most of her life, she grew up in uh, boarding uh, 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 schools. But this time, she's not on boarding school because she's also, apart from all the voluntary work, she decided she has to be home to take care of her own family who has also some problems. So she's studying in Iraimek, but she doesn't re, uh, uh, she's not a resident over there. And he, ma he said that during the war, I got this phone call and this uh, message on the answering machine that Nofa wants to come in. He said, what could a ninth grader do here? I will not respond to her. When she called, he says, do you want to, to uh, work in the kitchen? And she said, no, 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 I want to work with kids. I know how to work with kids. She belongs to the eighth class of that grade, which is the excellent students class. So she's also a member of the excellent student class. We know that always in time of need, there are the volunteers, there is the Jewish heart, there is the, the feeling that you want to help. And when I saw this elderly lady that is the house mother going with all the linen wear and crying, and I said, why are you crying? She said, you see, I am a remnant of the Holocaust. And I never thought that I will see here in Israel refugees, evacuees, Jews in their own country. That's why I'm crying, but I'm trying to help them whatever I can. So this is us, this is Vito, this is the Jewish people, and I'll that we will have better days. <laughs>